episode at the Shire with Piper Doug. I just stopped. Does it get any better than that? Yes, no, granted, they're behaving right now. Cows, cows, I, my cows are great. Calves, they're at the teenager stage. So yeah, they like to break the rules. But for the most part, they're good kids. Yeah, gorgeous day. Overcast, high teens, yes. Wearing a jacket. A man, it's a good day to get stuff done. I just thought, when you're a rancher, you look across the land and you see that. They're laid out on hilltops, just chewing the cud. Yeah. So yeah, I just got a couple of bales to feed and uh, then back to poop spread. And yes, those hobbit cows, they're the loudest ones in the yard. As soon as they can't see their babies, like you know if the baby's behind like a blade of grass or something. Yeah. Craziness. shelters in them. <laughs> That's um, see the uh, light color there? That's the opening of the second pen. So 21 loads out of the first pen, 19 loads out of the second pen. Now we're into the third one. So yeah, over 40 loads already and we're only two of the small pens in. And they're not small loads. <laughs> the air conditioning on her. No, I didn't rip it off. See, the bolts are still there. The limiter's gone. I actually took it off. Oh, it makes a heck of a difference. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, yeah. I hadn't shown you all, right? Yeah, concrete is going from here to there, to that wall. So yeah, 12 feet deep, six inches thick, and it's just gonna butt up against the, uh, the feed rail pipe. I'm not pouring through the pipe because I want the pipe to be able to flex and not break the concrete. Uh, because, I hope you can hear me away from the tractor. Uh, those steel, uh, they're actually girders from uh, one of those massive green bin floors. They were extras that I bought at an auction. So the plan is that they will go along the uh, bottom of the pipes to take place of wood because the wood is always breaking and it's just a, a nuisance basically. So we'll put a row along all the feed rail and then if I can, if I have enough, probably don't. I will get more, I'll put a second row, and then this whole area here where the tractor goes will get built up another foot. That way the cows are not reaching down to eat off the ground, they will be reaching out, and then that will actually make it harder for the little calves to get out, because then we can actually make the, uh, the underneck railing a little bit higher. That way we'll stop the newborns getting out, and that way the cows can feed from the feed rail. Yeah, easy. Snap your fingers, it works.
wishful thinking, hoping that this would keep them going for a month, but I don't know. Good shine to them. Full colors. Fall tillage has begun. Couldn't take me a while to rip up this massive oat field, but I'm hoping this will be the last disking this field will need. Yeah, give it a disking, let it dry out, then we'll hit it with the uh, cultivator, and then hopefully it'll just need a swift harrow in the spring and seed her down. Let her be done. Woohoo! It's working out pretty good though. Considering. Still going. I've been out here for, oh my gosh, minutes. I can't even see the end of the field, guys. The only saving grace is I can see the Bennett's house lights from here. At least I know I'm not far from civilization. Headlands done. She was a long haul. Sure glad I topped up the diesel tank before I came over here. There's lights in all directions. They're all jealous, you know. They're all jealous of this big outfit here. Okay. Head back to the ranch. <laughs> oh, so glad to see this back. Yeah, they did a pretty damn good job. It's not pretty, but I'm just so glad they were able to put it back together. Uh, that, uh, it wasn't uh, gonna have to be a case of finding some breaker's yard out in Alberta somewhere that might be able to take a tractor apart for me to get one of these and cost an arm and a leg. Oh, so yeah, they put it back together. They line board it close enough because it does have a bushing that goes in it. So at least that way, it's uh, that doesn't have to be pretty because there's a bushing going in it. Right in there, right in there. So yeah. So I'm gonna get her picked up, throw it in the workshop, and that'll be my nighttime project from here on in. Cause what the heck was it? Well, geez, between me and Liam, it was six hours to put this back together just to get out of the field and in the workshop. And I think I've got four, four and a half hours to take this off the tractor, putting together all the little half hours here and there. So I imagine it's probably gonna be close to double that, putting it back together, the four and a half. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Just... When you go. When you go there, boy. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. 
So yeah, that's that's gonna be uh, this winter because I have my daytime projects, not the, the uh, feed rails. The winter projects, drum roll for everybody there out there on the interwebs. No, not that, that's, that's a long term project. Anyway, uh, this winter projects are that silage chopper and the trailer that goes with it and that guy and I know there's a certain viewer out there that's going to be real excited about that isn't that right Drew? <laughs> and yes um, he asked me to look out for a grill for him and I've got I've got at least two other people across the prairies looking for the woven grill so anybody else out there in YouTube land because um, this is the Fordson Major Diesel this is a runner this actually does run um, which is the reason why it's now going to be going into the workshop to get built up, restored, however you want to put it. Um, it's a lovely old tractor. Because um, the other person... <clears throat> there's my intake cover. Uh, I don't know if it's squirrels that keep pulling those off. Bizarre, like it can't be the wind. Anyway, because like really good tires. Somebody put, uh, made wide rims up for it, so that's why it's got really good, uh, this tire not so good. This, this tire is not gooder. It's got issues. Um, cause the person that uh, I've got looking for the other part, they have my, uh, another arm. That's a great part about when you buy from like a Fraser auction yard is, uh, when I went back to go and pick it up, someone had stolen the other arm off of it and the battery. Yeah, that was good. <sighs> Blinking, blinkity blinks. Uh, I have the other rim over there, but I kind of like having the fat rims on the front. So I might just put another machine rim on the front because I like that. I like that. Um, Cause I like the, the fatty look. So yeah, just to know that uh, I actually have somebody on the lookout for the woven grill for you, Drew. There you go, bud. Um, so yeah, this is going to be going into the workshop. This will get hooked to the chopper and go into the shop uh, once the green bugger's out of there. So yeah, that's going to be winter projects one and two. So there you go. Let's have at her. Yeah. So this is where an engine hoist would be really, really handy. Really, really. Now, before anyone starts pointing any fingers and wagging them, I'm working smarter. And no, I'm not using ratchet straps completely. And yes, I have the uh, safety lock in. And I'm actually using a hoist. Now, fair enough, this hoist was probably made when my grandfather was born. And that's one of my things, because yes, I know, uh, Ed Gosling, hi Ed. I know Ed was talking about ancient equipment. And yes, there is a pillar drill in many stages of being restored in this hell hole of a workshop that is mine. Um, and so yeah, one more second. Beam scales. Yeah, they're of really no use, but I think they're cool. One's a McCormick Deering, and what the heck is the other one? I think it's a Harris. Um, 
course that's the McCormick Deering one and Gurney yeah huh so there you go so I don't know if Deering was part of the original deer company I don't know somebody in the comment section can keep me right uh not a clue who makes this one and i've had it sitting in a bucket up there you can read that when you can pause it union something or other i don't know there you go. Pause it and then you can figure it out. So yeah, nothing like old school. So I'm getting it up to height and then I'm gonna roll this forward, get it even closer and then start turning the swivels. And then at one point I should be able to hook this into the axle as it's going into the tractor. <laughs> oh my gosh. Woo! Let's give her a shot. So, little side note here. We are walking the last of the uh, stragglers up through the ravine. We're moving them back north for a little while. A little change of scenery. So yeah, we have had three, three uh, summer calves born. Because we take the ones that we're kind of suspecting they're still carrying or they're just favorites so we hold them let them go back out with the herd and this is one of them this is bud the cow uh, her nickname is butters butters this is her wee baby girl and if you'll notice she's missing a tail and it's fairly obvious she was born with one but she's got massive trauma which would have happened just after she was born because there's a lot of healing but as I'm following them trying to get this crew to follow me up when she takes a pee there's a lot of scarring around her vagina around her urethra um, so whatever whatever attacked her and you can see the marks there's a lot of scar like deep tissue hey ghosty there's a lot of deep tissue scars Cab's not hurting though, like it's healthy. And Butters is a really, really good cow, very quiet. And the fact that this is a summer cab and I can walk this close to it is amazing. So, in another month or so when we start to uh, train the uh, herd into the corral feeding, getting ready for weaning, Everything still seems to function, so it should be we should be able to finish it out. But very soul. Ay ay ay. That's what, oh sorry. That's funny. Ghosty came down just to fetch this lot. There's Akers. Hey Zike. Blackbird. Mama Flops is kid. One of the smallest cows, and she has these massive calves. Um, so yeah, keep going, Ike. Keep following. They're up around there. So yeah, I just want these guys to move on up. They're not getting shot out of here yet. They're shot out of the bottom field. But if you can see this, right in the center of the screen there, is a black shape, and there's a cow. Cow there, and I've known she's got a necrotic foot for quite some time, but she is feeding a quite a sizable bull calf, uh, steer calf, and I'm hoping she can finish the calf out to wean. Um, but it's not looking good. She's in pretty rough shape. We may, we gave her three courses of antibiotics. There's no foreign bodies in the foot. Um, 
um, she kind of bounces back and then away she goes again. So, so yeah, it's one of those where we're just kind of got to finish out the season and then do the humane thing. So, but I've got the rifle in the back of the truck and some some green. Can't say that too loud around Ike. Uh, so I can get her darted, give her some uh, LE, we'll start her on another course just to kind of pep her up. But okay, get these lot around the corner. They're just not leaving me. Leave me be. Leave me be, Puxley. Leave me be. Hello. Before anyone asks, this is the uh, this is the field that they're being moved from. So yeah, they're not short of food. Amazingly. Now yes, this here is more sort of slew grass, but they still eat it. There's still lots to eat. Yeah. Just trying to get these guys to move north out of the way so we can get this cow treated and give her some green creatures. Ike's kid, that's why she was still waiting, bugger. Where you go, you big galoot? Hmm. Ta da! Oh. I tell you, it doesn't look like much. But getting that little bugger there, well, yeah, it does weigh over 300 pounds. Probably closer to 400, really. Uh, getting that in there, right in there, was not fun. I will uh, insert a picture. So, yeah. So, I had the, as you saw, the chain hoist. So we managed to have it dangled out through here, picked it up from the ground, lifted it in fairly close. So then the next thing was we had to get the axle lined up because it has to mount to the axle as uh, you mount the belly frame, whatever you call it, the nose cone to the tractor and sliding into the loader frame. Uh, so yeah, as you saw in the picture, so you've got the chain holding this up, trying to keep it somewhat level, sliding it onto that pivot pin and the fancy dancy repaired one. So got that. So to move the whole lot together, then I had to lift each end of the axle up so I had ratchet straps. You knew there was going to be ratchet straps somewhere. I had ratchet straps hooked on over the top there, lifting each side of the axle up. That way I could adjust the whole lot as it was going in. But at that point, I couldn't bring the skid steer any further. And with all the movement. And so if you look in the back in the picture, you'll see there was a strap around the nose cone. So yeah, that was sucking the whole lot in. So another part, I don't know if I ever showed this, that apart from the eight bolts on either side, there's actually a dowel on the front of the casting of the engine that this has a hole in slot to. So yeah. So yeah, there is a 15, 16 bolt here and there's another one down there and then there's a big honking bolt on either side there with washer and shims because that whole lot has to be adjusted properly to which i found actually <laughs> whoever had been in here before had the shims done wrong they had all the shims on one side and uh when i lifted the chains up and down with these bolts tightened up i found out that the uh, gap on both of them were relatively the same so yeah i just moved one of the shims over now guaranteed granted i mean uh the shims are like the thickness of a human hair so it's not a huge deal so those are those three bolts 
Then there's these two big honking bolts that go right through all the plates. So I'm not entirely sure if this plate stays here all the time. Somebody in the comment section might be able to tell me if these plates are with the tractor. This plate on either side is with the tractor all the time. Because as you can see, this plate is part of the loader frame. So yeah, you got two bolts that run through the whole lot, all three of these pieces. And then there's three, uh, what do they call those captive bolts? Because they don't come out the other side. There's these three bolts here. So that's what holds either side on. So she's done. It's torqued up to, oh my gosh, I might poop. Torque setting. Uh, no, I will get the torque setting from the guys up at Show Lake uh, before I'm done, but that will be after we start setting it up and down. Put the wheels back on when everything's all popped back together, and then we'll set her down, we'll pick it back up, set her down, pick it back up, and then we'll retorque, retorque your nuts. Um, and same with uh, that and this guy, because I still have to put the uh, cotter pin in that. <clears throat> So, where do we stand now? Well, I could put the wheels back on, but I'm not gonna, because I need to be in here working. Yes, I have noticed the boots are pretty gooned. Um, but baby steps, guys, baby steps. So the next part is, I've got to start running the hydraulic lines, the oil lines back through that hole. And there's some sitting there. And uh, one of them is kicking around here somewhere. They are here. I can tell. I can vouch for that. There it is. Right there. It's hanging right in front of me. So, yeah. I'm going to put that stuff back under and then work my way back up. Uh, so, I still have a run to show a leg to do because as per my... Uh, was recommended by somebody to replace the belts before I go too much further... Uh, even though I did find out um, this hub that uh, goes in here, you can actually get this over far enough to replace the belts. But like they said, you're in this far, you might as well do them new. Um, the belts are actually pretty good. But I don't know how old they are, henceforth and therewith. Do or now. Um, so yeah, once that's done, the next thing will be to slap the pump back in and then start all that stuff together. And then, uh, we'll be getting ready to put tank and, uh, the nose plate back in. There's the other pipe there. So yeah. Oh, what's the other thing? Oh crap. Yeah. Hmm. As you'll notice this is damp now i washed all of these so i'm not entirely sure if this is a thing or not so i've got to pressure test this oil cooler um that's why i've got this so i'm taking up to the rain barrel up at the house and i'm gonna fire some air into it uh because i don't know whether in the process of it coming down clattering and banging something cracked that because she's leaking so let's get her done now. If insurance covers it, great. If not, it needs to be fixed anyway. So, yeah, like I said, it's, she's been around a while, this tractor, but it was bought as a backup tractor and I need it to be a backup tractor because that orange tractor is gonna be leaving fairly soon in the next month. Um, so all I need is this tractor. I need it back running and I need it to run well for however long that orange tractor is going to be away. Because as you can tell, this tractor has issues. I'm leaning to believe that that 7,000 hours on the clock is not factual. Not even remotely close. It's had a paint job at some point. Because as you can see, the fenders have been wrangled on. And he told me that this had been, this had happened. Some, somebody had caught the door and broke the hinge. And that door does not close and open smoothly. 
So yeah, but it was affordable and it did the job till it didn't. So thank you for watching the video. Whew. Poop spreading is firing along. Uh, yeah, it's dark outside. The south side of the farm is completely spread, cleaned out, done. I'm now into the north side. I will be changing fields for the foreseeable future, it's spreading, going down the road because I'm saving what's left out in that paddock out there. You guys saw there's a gap because uh, there's a pile out in the field. So there's no point in having a pile out in the field and hauling it somewhere else. So it's going to get spread out there. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting to the end of the month, getting close to when concrete prep needs to be getting done. Uh, figured out I need 150 sticks of rebar. That's fun. So yeah, I hope you all come back next week. And uh, hope you all have a good week. Hope this thing is a lot further along the next time you see it. Teddy bye everybody. Sketchy.